Hola, Sally. Oh, hola, David. ¿Cómo hola. estás hoy? Bien, bien. ¿Y tú? Oh, sí, sí. En Minneapolis hace mucho calor y sol y es un buen día. Sí. <laughs> ¿Y en Denver? Igual. Ah. Um, está haciendo calor, pero a mí me gusta el calor. Necesito, uh, súbeme mi micrófono un momento, por favor. Sí, es mejor. Sí. Yo, yo, yo conozco la palabra súbeme porque yo he escuchado, es, yo he escuchado la canción de uh, Ricky Iglesias se llama Súbeme la radio. Ajá. Ok, muy bien. <ríe> sí, me gusta mucho. No la conozco, pero bien. Mm. Muy bien, muy bien. Yo he escuchado en la radio. La he escuchado. La he... Oh, sí, sí, sí. El pronombre. La canción, so to, just to not be repetitive, you know, you say, I heard it on the radio. La he escuchado, escuchado, la he escuchado en la radio. Sí, muy bien. ¿El radio um, o le, la radio? La radio? Radio. Really, uh, radio is one of those that could go either way. Oh. It's actually uh, la radio or el radio. Oh, gracias por la información. Mm -hmm. No conozco. No lo conozco. No lo sabía. No lo sabía. Sí, sí, conozco. Uh, conocer, saber. Eh. <laughs> es difícil. Yeah, so um, one way I've heard it described, typically when you learn those two words, saber and conocer, you get taught that they're to know, right? To know mm -hmm. a piece of information versus to know a person or a place. Um, I've also heard it uh, explained as one, saber means to know, conocer means to be familiar with. I don't know if that's helpful oh, at that all. That is helpful, yes. yes. <clears throat> so sometimes that can help you kind of think about it too. Mm -hmm. What can I help you with today, Sally? This is tutoring. So um, what are you struggling with? What is causing Sally preguntas? Oh, muy cabeza, dolor de cabeza. We are just starting to study the tiempo subjuntivo. Okay. <laughs> it's muy, muy confusionado. Yeah. Um, en, en el presento. En, en, solo en el presento. En el presente. Presente, sí. Solo en el presente. Yeah. Um, oh. Hola. Hi. Ra Rafaela. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hola. Hi, thanks for joining us, Rafaela. Where, where are you from? I'm from Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. Oh, you're Does from Brazil. Live? Wow. Do you live there now? Do you yes. live in Brazil now? Oh. Very good. And are you learning English? Are you here to practice yes. English? Yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. Okay, very good. Well, my name is David and this is Sally. Um, I teach both Spanish and English. Uh, so this is something that we do once a week just to get our Spanish and our English students together. Um, it's tutoring. So the idea is that you have something that uh, you want to improve and I'm gonna help walk you through it, okay? Okay. Um, eu não falo português. Falo muito pouco. 
Mas fala bem. Nossa. Muito pouco. Que cruel. Não, não mais. Um, so, uh, just to get started, Rafaela, um, Sally was just asking me about the subjunctive tense. This is a very confusing thing for English speakers that are trying to learn Spanish. I never got that far with my Portuguese studies. I would imagine Portuguese has the subjunctive as well. Uh, I don't know, but uh, in English, we don't really use the subjunctive, you know. Mm. Um, there is one, I can only think of one circumstance in the English language where there's a, a tiny little change for the subjunctive. Um, and that's when we say an if clause. So it is not correct to say, for example, if I was to go to the mountains, it's correct to say if I were to go to the mountains. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the only difference in the English language for the subjunctive. Really? Yeah. For um, once, English is easier. Yeah. So this is a very interesting thing. Very beginner level English is very difficult for Spanish speakers to learn, and I would imagine Portuguese speakers too. I don't, like I said, I don't speak Portuguese, but I have a somewhat familiar understanding of it. Um, but English uses auxiliary verbs to make questions and to make negative sentences. So because of that, to say I do not, or do you, like the reversal in the question, do you speak English? No, I do not. That auxiliary verb is very, very problematic. Um, so that's, honestly, that's beginner level English, but because it's a disconnect from the Spanish language, it's incredibly hard for Spanish speakers to learn that. But then once you get into advanced English, super easy for native Spanish speakers. We don't change our verbs. So once you get pat, once you get familiar with that, uh, the auxiliary verbs in the present tense, um, it becomes even easier in the past tense because we only have one change in the past tense. And then going into the future tense, the conditional tense, all those other tenses, we just do it with a modification with the auxiliary verbs. I will eat, I would eat. But in Spanish, as I would imagine in Portuguese, you have all these different conjugations, all the different endings that you have to learn. So the higher up in English you go, the easier it gets. The higher up in Spanish you go, the harder it gets. <laughs> and it has to do about the way the languages work. Beginner level English is a nightmare to learn. Advanced English is quite easy. Beginner level Spanish is quite easy to learn. Advanced Spanish is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, Sally, your, your question about the subjunctive, um, there's a couple of things to, so I'm just going to explain this real quick, Rafaela, and then we'll turn it over to sure. you for questions about English, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I can share the whiteboard with you here. Okay, so subjunctive. I'm sorry, my handwriting is not very pretty. And it's even worse on a computer whiteboard, but we're <laughs> just stuff through it. So the first thing to know, Sally, is that we've got like our AR verbs and then ER and IR verbs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so one is just to learn the conjugations, which is fairly straightforward. It's going mm -hmm. to be the reversal of the AR verbs and the ER verbs. The A. Yeah. So um, what that means is you just reverse the way that you conjugate it, right? So if hablar is normally yo hablo, tu hablas, el habla. In the subjunctive, it's actually going to be. Um, sí. Yo. So it. The, the first person and the third person are going to be the same in the same. The same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's tu hable, tu hables, el or ella, a, mm -hmm. where that came from, hable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing here with our AR and our, uh, with our ER and our IR verbs, right? So if you take a verb like comer, yo coma, tu comas, 
el coma. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, in terms of, and that follows it. So over here, it would be Amos. And then N. And then over here, it's going to be Amos. And then um. My favorite word to help explain this is doubt. Okay. okay. Um, the subjunctive is used to talk about hypothetical situations. To just oversimplify it, if there's ever any doubt in the conversation, that's where the subjunctive comes into play. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this doubt. Oh. So you're not talking about something concrete or that you know for certain or that is happening for certain or anything. Right. Other words that come into play, hope, expectations. Beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. Okay. So like but I think all these, when you hope something happens, there's a doubt. Right. When yeah. you expect something to happen, there's still a doubt. Like I think what helped me, because I, I learned this too, I'm no different than you. I had to figure out how to make sense of all this because it doesn't exist really in English. Mm -hmm. um, and so like there are certain, you know, phrases where this will come into play. We almost always um, will form the subjunctive in a in a two clause sentence. So one one way to, and so you've actually probably more than likely been using this for a long time and you just didn't know that you were using it. So have Yes, you, but I wasn't using then the correct uh, verb. Not necessarily. So listen to what I'm about to say. Okay. Have you ever heard the expression, que te vaya bien? Sí. Mm -hmm. Yeah, que te vaya bien. That's the subject. Sí. The, y vaya, vaya con Dios. The full phrase is, espero que te vaya bien. Ah. I hope that it goes well for you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you've actually been using it for a long time. You just didn't know that it was using it. And because of the yeah. Spanish language being contextual, they chop off the first part of this, right? Okay. But So like, imagine you're talking to your kids, you know, and you, you're, you, could, you could give them the command form but then you could also soften it with the subjunctive. Right? Ah, so you might mm -hmm. tell your kids, lava los platos, wash the plates, mm -hmm. uh, mow the lawn, corta el césped, uh, clean your room, limpia tu habitación, right? Mm -hmm. We can practice this with the subjunctive and now you can replace that with quiero que tu laves los platos. Uh -huh. Quiero que cortes el césped. Quiero que limpies tu habitación. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. you're talking in the subjunctive. So it's like an alternative way in this situation for making a, a command, but ah. you're softening it. Oh, okay. So that's one way to think about it. Yep. Okay. Um, an another common use for it, right? So if, to tie it back to this, this doubt, right? You could say something like dudo, which means I doubt, doubt. Mm -hmm. or no creo, mm -hmm. or uh, no pienso. Mm -hmm. And then when you tie this in with the second clause, right? Dudo que... Manana sea fácil. I doubt that tomorrow will be easy. Easy. Okay. We would use the future tense. Yeah, va. I, I doubt that tomorrow will be 
easy. But in, mm -hmm. in Spanish, you have to use the subjunctive. Oh, oh, I see. So it would not be correct to say, duro que mañana va fácil. Yeah. So va, a, va a estar, va a ser. Exactly. Uh, this is where oh. the subjunctive comes into place. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's basically um, a really short introduction to the subjunctive, but it all has to do with this scenario of doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doubt, expectations, hope. Um, I'll have to go through some of my files, but there's like different little uh, acronyms and stuff that you can find that help explain the subjunctive where it gives you all the different, because there's certain verbs that are gonna prompt the subjunctive. Okay. And whether it's in the positive or the, the como se llama? Negative, right? Um, another phrase that will always be followed by the subjunctive, ojalá. Oh, see, I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, so almost, Ojalá que, and then whatever comes after that's going to be in the subjunctive. Okay. Ojalá is like saying I hope or I wish again. Okay. Yeah. Um, it'll take time. At the end of the day, like here's another one just to tie it into conversation, right? If a conversation is all about communicating and exchanging ideas, if you don't use the subjunctive, you will still be understood. So don't like let it get to you to the point where you freeze up and you don't talk. Okay. It, it will, it will it just sound to a, a person who is fluent, like you're, uh, you're not fluent and uh, they can understand what you're meaning, but it'll, it'll, it, it's not right. They'll think, no, that's sloppy. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, think about it like in, in English, instead of conjugating the verb be, and you say, I be in my house. Uh, mm -hmm. Not correct, but you understand me, right? Right. Doesn't right. sound good, but you understand, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's still, you still get the point across. It's just yeah. not correct. And then if the person corrects you enough times, eventually I'll be saying, using the subjunctive instead of something else. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you. Yeah, that's a good framework. The last little point about the subjunctive is learning which verbs are irregular in the subjunctive. And they tend to be the same verbs that you're used to as being irregular verbs. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. ser, ser is irregular, right? You don't, you say right. sea, right? Ir is irregular, is irregular. it goes to vaya. Okay. Uh, Stem changing verbs, the stem changes, and then you put on the reverse ending. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the hardest part about subjunctive is just knowing when to when exactly you're supposed to use it. But yeah, yeah. Little little by little. If okay. if you want to, Sally, now that I know you're working on the subjunctive, if you have it, like if you want to do some homework, if you want to share some activities or oh. do some activities together, then we can do it and kind of work 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 through those activities and I can explain to you one by one which okay. one, where you want to use the subjunctive, okay? Okay, thanks. Right. Was that helpful? Yeah, that was very helpful. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank they, you. They often do not explain it the right way in a course. Like 90% mm -hmm. of the tutoring I've ever done has revolved around the subjunctive. And but when I explain oh. it, people tend to get it. When I when I, I just tied into that word doubt. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, let's turn it over to Rafaela. Um, yes. Rafaela, do you have some questions about the English language that uh, I or you've got two native English speakers with with you today, so we can both help you. Mm -hmm. Today, my first it's, it's my first first class, and uh, I don't think about a question, but um, uh, sometimes I I think about uh, the. I don't know in English uh, words for describe the the moment the the things like um, uh, nowadays I don't know uh, much uh, much words and I would like to know more. Okay. Described. 
Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, these are, uh, that's a good question. Let me bring back the, the whiteboard, right? So she's asking for words yes. like nowadays. Nowadays, you can say these days, um, currently, recently, in these times. What else can we say here, Sally, for mm -hmm. synonyms for nowadays? Yeah. Do you, why, um, what, tell me, tell me about that, Rafaela. Do you, um, I guess let me back up just a little bit. Uh, are you currently studying English somewhere? Oh, sorry, I don't understand. Uh, do you study English right now? Like, are you in a college program uh, or school or what? Yes, um, uh, I actually, I study uh, odontology, but uh, uh, because the COVID, I need to stay at home. And I, I try to, to enjoy this crying time for improve my English. Okay. And now I am do, doing a course in English on the internet. Okay. For try to improve. Oh, very good. Nice. Your, your English is good. You oh, sing English well. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I think that I need to improve uh, much, much, very much. But mm -hmm. I, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so like when I hear a question like this, when you're looking for synonyms to like nowadays, it makes me think that you might be writing like a paper or something like that, like an academic paper that you're getting graded on and you just need different ways to say it. Um, it can also yeah. come into play like when you're reading in English, if you're reading the newspaper or something like that. Where did you learn this word nowadays? Mm, what I, I read in I wrote in nowadays. Uh -huh. You're um, I I um, I participate of a research group, uh, in scientific initiation in my college, okay. and I li I like to read about uh, stem cell of poop of dental poop. I don't know uh, if uh, you do you meet uh, stem cell of of poop. But uh, I, I was writing an article about this. Do you understand? <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, I do. And uh, I like to, to read about this, the COVID, the news about COVID, because I'm really expect that the scientists uh, discovery and a vaccine mm -hmm. uh, for to come back to college. <laughs> And I like to read about this, and I, I try to, to read uh, text in English, news in English, Good. for to improve my English, and that's it. Your English is very good. Yes, <laughs> yes. Another word could be presently, presently. Presently. Can I take a photo? Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you. Can sometimes the, they, people say ice cream. Sometimes people say in this day and age to describe something that is happening now. Okay, but the the most common for uh, in the in the normal dialogues, I don't know. I don't know uh, what this word, what the word is more common. I wouldn't say that one of these is really more common than the other. We, we use them all interchangeably. Maybe in a scientific article, they might not use nowadays. Yeah, nowadays. I think that's a little more casual. Um, but currently, recently, presently, um, I think those would maybe be a little more um, 
formal. Okay, thanks. I I um, learned the the expression in articles. I learned the expression. Uh, on the other hand. Oh yes. I, yes, I I in Portuguese is very common. Um, uh, it's not very common. Uh, we say por outro lado. In English is. Uh, and on the other hand, I, I, I like so much this expression. On the other hand, right? Yeah, yeah. And what, what, what is the English translation of the Portuguese saying that means the same thing? On the other side. Oh, is it? Yes, exactly. Oh, yes. Okay. That would be the same as in Spanish. Portuguese and Spanish are very, very similar. Close. Yeah, I can, I can understand a lot of Portuguese. Like, mm. without yeah. looking, at, without looking at a book, I would feel very comfortable traveling in Brazil if I'm ah. on a plane tomorrow. Um, if I if I studied Portuguese for a month. I would have no problems at all, I'm sure. Yeah. Rafa Rafaela, do you yes. speak other languages? No, no, no. My father, my, sorry, my parents speak uh, German, a cultural oh. German, because I live in a, a, a German city. But uh, I don't learn when I was a child. Uh, my my parents just talk German uh, with um, with our neighborhood, oh. <laughs> not with us. But but my my parents uh, uh, talk German, okay. and I try to talk English. Try to learn. Uh -huh. I I I know a, a false cognate in between Portuguese and Span Spanish uh, is. Aproveitar. Uh, aproveitar in Portuguese is like enjoy it, uh, opportunity, but in, for, in Spanish is, I don't know in English, uh, like um, tirar vantagem. Do you understand, David? To do what? Uh, the word aproveitar. I don't know that word, aproveitar. In English, is enjoying, enjoying. Enjoying. Hmm. Yes, but in Spanish uh, language, is like. Um, let me see the translator. To say enjoy in Spanish is is disfrutar. Yes, yes, but. Oh, uh, but if you say uh, aproveitar in Spanish, you the mean aproveitar is take advantage. And Portuguese is enjoy it. Do you understand? It's uh, false co a false cognate. Aprovechar. Right, aprovechar. Yeah. Aprovechar. Okay. Yeah. So yes. Take advantage of. Uh, the the same word have have the different sing, di different means in Portuguese and in Spanish. Yeah. I don't know if I I I can uh, I could is explain the 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 thing I, you, I went. No, you you explained it perfectly. A false cognate. That's exactly what that's called. I yes, yes. You. Your English is really good, Rafaela. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I don't have uh, a lot of vocabulary, and uh, I don't. Uh, I I think I don't construct construct the correct phrases sometimes. But I I I feel that I am improving. I am improving my English in this context. Yes, I think your sentence construction is very good. Yeah, it's quite good. Oh, thanks, mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. the, the Very good to her. <laughs> Especially if you have you only studied English in Brazil, or have you have you gone to an English speaking country? Like, have you visited the United States, or? No, no, no. I mean, that's. I sometimes I intend to to go another other countries, but uh, uh, until this moment, no, no, I just. 
I just uh, meet other countries in Brazil. Oh, sorry, other cities in Brazil. Yeah, mm -hmm. for for not having been or even lived in a in an English speaking country, your English is fantastic. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think I think the same the same I'm, thing. I'm always so impressed when I meet people that um have only learned how to speak a, a new language without traveling that have only studied in a in a course or something like that because that means you're you're very dedicated and and you try to practice as often as you can yes yeah. do you watch movies in english uh yes i watch uh in english and uh, the legend the legend in english too Yes, because I I can, yes I can hear the perfect uh, uh, already, and uh, the legends help me. Yes, I do that with Spanish movies also. Yes, I watch yes, them perfect. in the Spanish language with subtitles in Spanish as well. Subtitles because it's difficult for me to hear and understand the Spanish. Yes, yes. For it's, me, English is the same thing. Is it? it seems to me that Spanish speakers talk very fast. Does I that, think does about the English. Like that with English for you? Yes, yes, the <laughs> same, the same thing. Uh, I, I think they, 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 they say the words running, uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> but, but you speak quickly too. You, you do yeah. not sound very, like you are talking too slow. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I, I um, heard mm -hmm. uh, they talking um, so fast and I, I speak so fast too. <laughs> David, is it important to listen at full speed? When I'm watching Spanish YouTubes, I can turn the speed down. Uh, yes, yes. Is it better to do that until I can start understanding more? Yes. yes. So I think, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about what makes you feel most comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, you are going, like, when you travel to a new country, like, I know you like to travel, right? So the next time you go to Mexico or Argentina or, you know, Cuba, whatever Spanish-speaking country that you go to, you know, people are going to be talking normally. Right. Um, that said, so... This this is an interesting topic when, when people say that it sounds so fast. It sounds like people yeah. are speaking very quickly. People are just talking normally. Um, there's a few reasons why it sounds really fast. Uh, one is that the ear is kind of like a muscle. You have to train it to hear the new language. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds odd, but you have to say, hey, listen to this. You know, initially, it's going to sound odd because it is odd. It's a new language. It's a different mm -hmm. language. Your ear is not used to hearing it. So no matter how fast or how slow somebody is talking, right, like I can talk very slow or I can talk really fast, right? Um, until you've heard it enough times, it's, it's going to sound fast. Mm -hmm. Another thing is vocabulary. If you don't have the vocabulary, if you don't have, if, if people are using words that you have never learned, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow they're speaking because you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's kind of a catch 22. It's, it, it really depends on, uh, I think especially initially, what makes you feel comfortable so if listening, if you can slow down Spanish, mm -hmm. or if you can slow down English, and that makes you feel more comfortable, at least initially, then, then do that, you know, just, no, but don't turn it into a crutch. Right. Like at some point, you're going to want to break that because you'll, you can also teach 
your ear to hear it too slowly. And then when uh -huh. people are talking at a regular pace, then you can't keep up, you know? Um, I joke with my students sometimes that they just need to listen faster. <laughs> right? Don't, don't slow the Spanish down, just listen faster. Yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of a joke, it's kind of true, but it, it really goes back to the vocabulary thing too. If you don't have the vocabulary, especially initially, mm -hmm. um, and you're just listening to Spanish or you're just listening to English and you're not comprehending it, you're not necessarily doing yourself any favors. You're not necessarily being productive, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just hearing blah, 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 that's not helping you. Mm -hmm. It's only helping you if you're doing something to get to the understanding, right? Mm -hmm. So like the, the activity that I gave you, Sally, you and Angela a couple of weeks ago, right? To do the listening with the songs, but look up the lyrics, follow along with the lyrics. That's to help you build up your vocabulary and to teach your ears how to listen to what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about it yesterday. Uh, I was listening to a Michael Jackson song on the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't understand anything he was saying. <laughs> I was thinking about the, the class that I had with you in hand where I said, look up the lyrics. I'm like, yeah. I didn't look these lyrics up because yeah. he was singing so in tune with the melody. I could not differentiate his voice from the music that was playing. Mm -hmm. Like, and it just, it just, <laughs> that's what it sounded. And it was English. I, yeah. I hear songs in English all the time. This, yeah. especially the new like pop culture, rap hip hop uh, pop the way they the the way they sing um gosh there's another like the ariana grande i can't understand any of her her songs i mm. like there, there's one that's always on the gym on at the gym when i go work out and i had to come home and look up the lyrics because it was driving me crazy bruno mars i love bruno mars me too. I, I have a ton of respect for him have no idea what he's singing. <laughs> well, and some, no, no, no. Like the way they do this yeah. thing with their voice where they just, so it's not actually helping you. And right. this is me listening to, as a native English speaker, listening to songs in English where I don't even understand them, you know? Yeah. But then I go and I look them up and then I train my ear how to hear what Bruno Mars is singing. And now I can sing along with the songs. Huh? Yeah. And so like that's it sounds odd, but you know, that's yeah. a that's a thing. You have to teach your ear how to listen to what you're hearing, if that makes sense. This so, morning I Googled for YouTube or I searched in YouTube for listening exercises in Spanish. Okay. And and I found a, a 12 minute video and it was kind of a tour of some festival in Nashville and I watched it three times in order to better understand it and that was really helpful to me yeah I knew I mean I I've been to Nashville I know the city and the music scene and all of that so I had that familiarity with it first so I kind of knew the topic and then each time I would catch more of what they were saying in Spanish. Good, yeah. I like to hear a podcast too. Mm -hmm. uh, pod podcast uh, uh, make it for Brasileiros, for Brazilian, uh, speaking English. Uh, it's oh. uh, a little bit slowly. Uh, but and I have and I like to practice new words in uh, I don't know uh, if you do you meet but is Anki it's a, a it's app it's uh, every day I learn some new uh, words in English it's very good uh -huh. uh, yes yeah, I, I know the app that you're talking about. That's not very popular here in the United States, but I know what you're talking about. Um, something that we use a lot is called Quizlet, something that's more popular. Yes, I, I know Quizlet too. 
I have a question, a curiosity. Okay. <laughs> uh, in English, uh, for example, the Brit Brit British English and the American English uh, have the has the different um, ways to say. It's it's difficult to hear sometimes the same the same word in different uh, country in different countries. And uh, in Spanish is the same uh, the same thing. Uh, you have the different. I don't know if it's sotaki, sotak. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, times times fifty in Spanish because um, you know for the most part, and I'm not an expert on every single dialect. Um, I'm sure if I said this to a British person and an Australian person, they'd jump all over me, but you know, British English, Australian English, New Zealand English, South African English, Jamaican English, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's all closer to the British English than say like American English is kind of in this completely different category. Um, here in the United States, we have different variations of, of the English language uh by the region the way that people in the southeast talk is quite different than the way the people in the northeast talk and, and on the west coast you know um but in spanish yeah you have like almost every single country you're gonna change the accent and the dialect the, the vocabulary mm -hmm. and stuff like that certain countries more than others uh but yeah for sure like Cubans and Mexicans can have a hard time talking to each other, even though they're both speaking Spanish because of the words that they might use and then because ah. of the, the accent and the expressions that they're using. Mm -hmm. And same thing with us, you know, here in the United States versus England, um, I can carry on a conversation with one British person, but if I'm around a group of Brits talking to each other, it can be very hard to understand them. Oh, yes. And I've been to London. I've, you know, I spent a month in London back in like 2003 or something like that. And yeah, I was, I was surprised at how different the languages can be, how difficult it can be to talk to somebody, even in my own language, you know? Mm. So the, part, the, 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 the I, we have, answer. go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, the dialect and the accent can make a huge difference. And I'm, you know, I'm not 100% sure because I don't know enough about Portuguese, but I'd be willing to bet that there's a big difference between Brazilian Portuguese and Portugal Portuguese. Yes. Right? yes I'm yeah. from Portugal, but. Yes, yes, thanks. Yeah. Do you have a like what what's more common in in Brazil, American English or British English? Do you think? Uh, uh American English. I, mean, I would guess, but yeah, I don't very know. Very common, very common. We have a a, a lot of influence uh, the music, the culture in Brazil. Yeah. And then probably you get more tourism from the United States than from Yes. Yes. I would, know, I would guess just because of proximity. Yeah, when it when it comes to learning a language too, it, that's also an important consideration. Um it's not that there is one form of English that's better, you know, I can't claim that American English is better than British English or vice versa. Uh, you know, and one aspect british english you know english comes from england so in theory that would be the more pure form of of the language but if you study all your life british english and you get a british accent and then you come to california it's going to be hard so you have to kind of think yeah. of when when i think about learning a language it's a it's a very long process there's no shortcuts you know um, and it's something that you have to do for years and years and years and you can keep doing. I've been speaking Spanish for 20 years and I still learn new stuff in Spanish almost every day. Just like in English. I learn new words in English all the time. Oh. And new expressions yeah, yeah. and new sayings and things like that. But you have to kind of start with your end goal. 
in mind. Start, start with the end. What's, what's your primary purpose for learning English, Rafaela? Do you plan on moving to the United States or do you plan on moving to England? Or do you just plan on staying in Brazil and using English to, you know, improve your employment? I don't know, you have to kind of think about that process, you know, and find the program that lines up with whatever your uh, goals are. I I intend to stay in Brazil because um, I am really uh, I don't know next uh, with my family and I I don't close. think uh, sorry you say I'm really close to my family uh, yes yes uh, I am really close with my family and I I don't uh, I can't ima imagine it I I live in another country for long years mm -hmm. but I. I really like the the English I always like, and uh, I think it's very important um, because in my my area I I pre intend to to be teacher and on the college and uh, research. Uh, the English is very very important for to read uh, articles for to participate in congress in uh, events. One, one other um, little correction for you. you. In English, we don't say for to, you say in order to. Sorry, I don't understand. So like how you're saying for to study, for to write. Ah. In English, we don't say that. You say in order to. Order to. In order to. Ah, in order to. Okay, and then, thanks. And then you can just cut that off as well and you can just say to. So I study English to work at the university or i want to ah. speak english to talk to new friends ah, okay okay it's more right. it's more easy <laughs> it's easier yeah yes. i think you're you're doing that from probably because spanish works the same way and in spanish you'd say para hablar right para exactly exactly para doesn't trans para sometimes translates to for but this is a preposition that can mean many other things as well Yes, but I I hope I hope to travel in uh, for uh, to on other countries uh, too. Uh, I I like to to visit uh, United States, uh, French, the the European almost countries. Okay, and and that's it. But I don't intend to move on Brazil for and uh, stayed for a long years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the great thing about English is it is, it is also the international language of communication. So yes. whether you're traveling in the United States or you're traveling in France, like you'll be able to use English almost anywhere you go to travel to help. Yes, you. yes, yes. And probably road signs, other signage, will be in English as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true, that's true. Mm. Good, well, let's see here. We have 13 minutes left. Um, what else? Any other questions, Sally or Rafaela, about the, uh, the English or the Spanish languages that I can help you with today? I cannot think uh, in a, a not, uh, another questions now, but uh, when I, uh, on the week, during the week, I have so many much questions uh, um, uh, when I was studying. And yeah. I really like so much, so much this class. In, in the oh. next oh, Wednesday, I will bring some new questions. <laughs> Yeah, it's always good, right? Like, so I'm just sitting here at my desk, but no matter where I go, I always have a notebook with me so I can write down mm. questions, and write down my thoughts. Um, this is kind of a cool activity for you to do as a language student. Um, and that is to create, in your case, Rafaela, an English journal, and in your case, Sally, a Spanish journal. Mm. And you can kind of split it up into different parts. Um, but you should always have one 
section just dedicated to ongoing questions. So anytime you get stumped with something and then you can bring them to, because the purpose of this Wednesday one is, is truly tutoring to, to where I just open it up to questions and then I teach you based off of what questions you have. Um, Rafaela, I do another one on Friday mornings um that's just pure conversation where we where all we do is talk it's not really for teaching it's more just for talking um what what time is it in brazil right now now is at uh 10 for uh, sorry um 6 uh 50. it's 50 p.m yes PM. But you're three hours ahead of us, okay? So on two Friday, hours ahead of me. <laughs> I am in Minnesota. Oh not yeah. Colorado. So I am in the central daylight time zone. So two hours ahead of you. It's four fifty here. So on Friday morning, the, I think the conversation one is at one PM Brazil time because it's at ten AM Colorado time. Mm -hmm. 1 p.m. is a good hour mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, so feel free to join us there. I'm going to also, um, in the chat box here, I'll put my uh, email address. And is it a Duolingo event? Um, yeah, I mean, technically it's a language school. So I'm the director of a, a school here in, in Colorado called The Language School. Um, yeah. I can just give you our website. And uh, this a... is free? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's free? Yeah. I've been a, these are events that I do for our students at the language school. We teach both Spanish and English here. So one of the things that really helped me learn Spanish was finding a conversation partner, somebody that I made friends with and I felt like I could practice with outside of school frequently. And so I do these events so that I can help my English students find Spanish students and vice versa. Um, so that you have somebody that you can practice with because it is a, you know, I don't, I don't think learning Spanish or English is a particularly hard thing to do, but it is a time consuming thing to do. You have to practice and practice and practice a lot. That the hardest part about it is finding the time to do it. So, um, by doing these events, you know, I've got Sally and I've got Rafaela that hopefully, you know, maybe you can exchange contact information and you have a new conversation partner, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then on, yeah, so today is mentoring. I do this every Wednesday from three to four Mountain Standard Time, which I guess would be six to seven Brazil, uh, yeah. four to five Minnesota. Um, and then Friday is 10 to 11. But I also teach classes as well. We have small group classes and private one-on-one -on -one lessons. So I could help you out with that as well too if you're, if you're looking for some additional help. Um, yes. And I put my email also, Rafaela, in case you want to contact me and we can talk. Okay, okay, thanks. I met a someone else in one of David's groups uh, who is in Ecuador and he and I talk every week too oh, really? and he is fluent in Spanish of course and learning English oh. and so he helps me with Spanish and I help him with English oh yeah it's nice. the Friday the Friday group often has several people in, from around the world we, we have a oh. lot more people on Friday for whatever yeah. reason. I don't, I don't know 100% why, but yeah, Friday we get, mm -hmm. it, it fills up with the, I have it limited to 10, 10 people and it, mm -hmm. it typically fills up with 10 people. And I think especially now during the pandemic, when so many people can't go to work, can't go shopping yeah. uh, and pretty much stay at home. Yes. How is the situation there now? Uh, the situation is not good. No. I I live I live in a country city, and uh, uh, here we don't have uh, we don't have cases. We just have one case, but it's uh, great now. 
Good. But in the uh, big cities like Porto Alegre, like Sao Paulo, I think you know Sao Paulo, uh, the situation is very bad. And uh, some people don't, people don't respect the uh, use to mask for, for go outside or, uh, or some uh, friends uh, make a party. It's very difficult, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Uh, we, I think Brazil has one million cases. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow. Terrible everywhere. Yes, 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 it's very sad. Yes. Yeah, I, it's, you know, it's hard, but uh, it's just the right thing to do, to, to try yeah. and reduce your interaction with people and, and use masks. I don't understand. I don't either. Here in the United States, the masks have been kind of politicized. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems like depending on which political party you align with that's those are the people that are wearing not always not 100 percent of the time but no. I, I i had certainly seen you know the anti-mask people coming from one political party versus versus the other um i don't like wearing a mask it's not comfortable but i do it because i believe in participating in a society and adhering to certain norms that benefit the the common good you know like like many people i have my doubts about what is actually happening right now or not um you know, I, I think in reality, when you when you look at the numbers, the, the chances of catching it are very low and the chances from dying from it are even lower. Yeah. But you just don't know. You just, oh. I, I don't feel like I really have a very good idea. I certainly don't feel like I am smarter than Dr. Fauci or all the, all the scientists and the, the medical experts. Um, and if wearing a mask is, is something that can help us get back to reality a little mm -hmm. quicker, then I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah. Um, it isn't that hard. I know it's not totally comfortable, but it, I mean, it, it's not painful or anything like that. What has been interesting here in Minneapolis is that so far, we have not seen a spike in cases since all of the demonstrations and protests about the death of George Floyd. And that's that was here in this city. And, that's people and there were thousands, thousands of people in the streets, close together, yelling, yeah. screaming. Um, and so far, there hasn't been the spike. But it may, you know, it may come. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. But I hope you both stay safe. Okay. Good and stuff. we can meet again, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully we'll see each other on Friday, okay? Yes. Um, next week, there will not actually be these events. We, we do close for the 4th of July, for the week of the 4th oh, that's of July. So we're... I'll be on my summer break next week, so. Good. Uh, Good. Are you traveling into the mountains? Uh, I'm probably, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm uh -huh. still um, trying to get my house in order. So like I, you know, I closed the school and now I have the language school in my house. <laughs> I've got all, yeah. the, all the furniture and boxes. I'm still trying to unpack and figure out what to do with. Um, I've got, I've got to look at my schedule with my son and his mother. I think she actually has him for the 4th of July. So I don't know what, I've, I've got to mm -hmm. take a look at all that and figure out exactly what we're going to do. If I can, I would love to go to the mountains. I went for a hike on Saturday. Um, 
you know, I've been working like nonstop for just like five years and uh, yeah. it's been hard to enjoy everything that Colorado has. But now that I've, you know, closed, closed the language school, the physical location, things are actually seem like they're going to get a little bit easier, hopefully, maybe. Um, okay. I got to enjoy a little bit of the weekend last weekend. And so, yeah, yeah. just taking taking some time off you know if you think uh learning a language is hard try teaching one. Oh yes so yes. so everything that's going on in your head is is going on in my head times 10 constantly all day every day and so that's that's what the summer breaks are for to get my head yeah. a little bit just yeah relax and you know can't can't go on a summer trip um but yeah hopefully i'll get into the mountains and do some hiking and You'll, you'll play it by ear. Rafaela, is that an expression that you have in Portuguese? Play it by ear? It means you don't really have any plans and you'll kind of see how things evolve or develop. I don't, don't understand the, the phrase. Play uh, it the first. by ear. Play. Play it by ear. I'll type it. Play it by ear. And it means that you're just going to, I was, David, I was going to say wing it, but I don't think that would be helpful. <laughs> oh, but we don't have this expression in Portuguese, I think. Oh, no. I, and I don't receive your text. Oh, I have it in the chat. You, you can, can you see chat or not? Yes, yes, I see, but I just have the... Oh, it says the, just to David. They, okay, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'll put it to... to, to uh, I, I think it's private, Lina. Yeah. Yes, here we go. Play it by ear. Play it by ear. Uh, I, I understand now, but we don't have this expression in, in Portuguese. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? It means that you don't have specific plans ah. to do something, and you'll just okay. wait and see what pops up. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh. In Spanish, it would be like saying, vamos a ver, let's see. Oh, yeah. Portuguese. In Portuguese, is eh, vamos ver, vamos, vamos ver, yes. Okay. Portuguese and Spanish, I think, are out of all the different Romance languages that were born from Latin, right? So you've got Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, and French. I, I feel like in certain ways, Portuguese and Spanish are, they're, they're so similar. The pronunciation is really different. I'm, I'm surprised at how different the pronunciation is. Ah. But in, in certain aspects, it's, yeah. Okay, well, I've got to run. Okay, so, obrigado, eh, Rafaela. Eh, gracias, Sally. Um, thanks sí. for joining me today. And I hope to see you too very soon. Send me an email if you want to, mm. Rafaela, so we can stay in touch. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see each other on uh, Friday, okay? Adios. Yeah, but, but in 15 days, we will have the... We we'll, we have the class in uh, Wednesday, fifteen days. On Wednesday, yeah. So in two weeks, in four two weeks. Days, two right? weeks, yes, yes. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, I uh, I hope you see again. Thank okay. you for the opportunity. All right. Adios, gracias, David. Bye.